Well, Jasmine Green, once again, I have you on Julie Whitney Scott Presents. And as usual, I'm just so thrilled to have this opportunity for you to come and talk theater with me and my audience. And just to talk about the things that have been going on with you and what's been going on in theater. This show is called Let's Talk Theater. So I want us in this show, we're going to not just talk about what we've done and what we're doing. We're going to talk about theater. And But before we get into that, I would like for you to just start off by letting the audience know, first off, what is it, Jasmine, that drew you to wanting to be involved in the theater? Uh, you're a playwright. You know, you're a screenwriter. You work behind the camera, in front of the camera. You're an actress. And I want you to tell us, because you're very young, and you've got a great future ahead of you. And for my young audience out there, and even those of us who are a little more seasoned, uh, and have thought about it. What is it that drove you in particular to want to be in the entertainment world and to want to just be a storyteller, bringing it to life? It actually took me a long time to figure out that I belong in the theater. Um, Cause as a child, I had a really active imagination. And on top of that, I also had multiple personalities. And you can ask my mom and sister, I would pretend to be different characters depending on the mood that I was in. And they learned to call me by those character names. And so as a child, I didn't realize that I already had, you know, personalities and characters and stories played out in my mind. And when I realized, you know, that's what actors do. And I, I learned that you do that in theater. Um, that's what entertainers do in movies and stuff. And I was like, I definitely want to get into it. But it, it took me a long time. I was really intimidated by the industry. I was intimidated by other people's talent. I was intimidated by the, the social groups and the cliques in the theater. Um, so it wasn't until college when I just said, okay, bump it. I'm, I'm going to take a theater class. I'm changing my major to theater. And I just went for it and ended up being the best decision I ever made. I've, I've never looked back since then. Wow. So it wasn't until college. So are you saying that before college, you never took your, your acting ability to the stage at all? Not one. I think maybe a church play, but no, no full length plays, no training. No, nothing. I just was an audience member at that point, attending theater shows. So when you decided that at, when you got into college that you was going to just go for uh, what you were already obviously it, uh, made to do, <laughs> okay? Because that is what we do as storytellers. I know for me, uh, it's no surprise to me that you had characters in your head because I still now. <laughs> As a writer, I'll start talking out loud and saying things, and it's the character that I'm working on that's talking. And then, you, and and you know, so it it's funny you said that too because you know, at a young age, we have to we have to really work hard and tell it ourselves we're not. Going to <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know what I'm saying because it's like you know they have names for people like that, don't they? They call them schizophrenic and yes. you, you know stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> So was it, how hard, what, how hard was it, or was it hard for you to take that personality of yours outside of your family, or, or did you just keep it like in a safe zone because of the static and things that people would say? Oh, it was very hard. I definitely kept it within my family, and even my family was kind of like, is she okay with all these personalities? But yeah, I... I don't even think I talked about it with friends. I didn't do anything. And college was my first step into, you know, saying, okay, I'm going to pursue this. But before then, it was just my family. And even they didn't know that I wanted to act. I wanted to be in, you know, on stage and in movies and stuff. So it was, it was kept very close to myself for a very long time. How important do you think it is for uh, a child who... It's, it's experiencing 
these, this imagination. Uh, my oldest daughter, she had a friend and um, when she was like two or three and, you know, she would talk to the friend and all that. And, and she, uh, anytime there was any trouble, friend did it uh, until, you know, I had to, <laughs> the friend started doing some things that I had to put a stop to. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's like, okay, friend, cut. But, you know, how do, important do you think it is for young people to have a supportive family uh, when you're that creative? Uh, and, and, you know, do you think that if your family was not as supportive as they were, that you would have kept that in you? Or, do you, or, you know what I mean? Like some kids get stifled mm -hmm. and it's just, you know, it's like, you. what do you think about that? I absolutely think that even if you don't have a supportive family, I think you need some kind of support system. Because if my parents and, and my sister didn't allow me to be my crazy self when I was growing up, I definitely, it, the gift probably would have died inside of me. And it would have died with me because outside of my family, I didn't know how people would react to, to my personalities. And, and even being around my friends, and sometimes I would just start talking with a different accent because that was another character coming out and they would look at me funny. And I was like, oh, let me pull it back. People aren't ready for that. So I think it's absolutely important to have some kind of support system because otherwise, if nobody is encouraging you and, and seeing it from outside of your perspective, then that gift can very well die with in, inside you. So once you got into college and you decided to go in and start looking at taking theater uh, courses and things, what was the first thing that you, you did in theater? Did you automatically start acting? Did you start writing? What was the first thing that you felt led to do to put yourself out there? So I kind of jumped in both feet and my first theater course was and act, I took acting 101, I took theater appreciation, and I took theater history all in the same semester. So I had a semester of like just theater classes and I, and that's why I was like, I absolutely love this. I love learning about the history. I love, um, you know, learning about the appreciation and, and the, the pieces that have, you know, set the stage for us to follow afterward. And then, you know, doing my acting class and, and the very first monologue that I did in that class, I got a round of applause and I was like, that right right there was affirmation that I was in the right place, that I actually got a round of applause after my first monologue. And that is the monologue that I still use today in auditions. <laughs> you know, that, that's, one of the, that's one of the things that uh, I hear a lot. It's that once that first applause comes, uh, that a lot of us, we get hooked and, you know, it could, because it's like, wow, somebody appreciates what yeah. we're doing because so many people don't appreciate theater and actors and anybody in entertainment world. Mm -hmm. And so when you get that applause, and for some people, it's the only kind of acknowledgement that they may have gotten or, or may get uh, if they're not getting it in their homes or, you know, or, or from the people that are closest to them. And so to have outsiders, people that you don't know, know anything about you, give you that uh, appreciation, it makes, it dri it's a driving force, uh, I think. So in line with that, knowing that the audience is a driving force uh, behind some of us in what we do, how do you think our present dilemma with the social distancing and our, our pandemic, how do you see it affecting uh, the live stage in theater and, and um, the changes you yourself have been involved in being uh, able to do some productions, uh, work on productions with other companies, and how do you see it? Um, it are we losing it anything because we don't have our audience anymore? How, are we making up for it? What do you see in regards to that? 
I feel like we are losing a little bit of, of the theater spirit with, you know, this pandemic happening. It's really unfortunate because either, you know, as actors on stage, we have to stay six feet apart or sometimes we're masked or the fact that you have to have less spaced out audience members out there and, and you know, you're, you're having to filter the, the, the best parts about theater and that's, you know, packing the house and, and having, you know, real up in your face emotions. And if sometimes I'm really passionate about what I'm saying on stage, sometimes I may spit, you know, it's, it's, it's that kind of stuff that makes theater and that's what separates it from film. You know, that, that for me, that's the spirit of theater. And I, I'm waiting for the day when this does pass so I can do theater in its fullness and greatness that it should be. Well, speaking of the difference between theater and film, you're also a wonderful, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, filmmaker. Uh, you recently, last year, thank goodness, before the pandemic was able to complete yeah. Your uh, year-long project of Lie in the Bed You Make, uh, which was a web series. And you also were with the Columbus Black Theater Festival this year and did, were able to take a monologue and, and had to, with the social distancing, uh, bring that to, to life somehow uh, by using film. <laughs> uh, because at that time, of course, there was no, you couldn't do anything live as far as in the mm -hmm. audience. You know, they're just now getting around to letting people even come in uh, a theater. And then it's 15% or something like that of your whole total space. So that may be 10 people or, or 20, depending on uh, how small your theater is. You, you, you know, or how large your, your theater is. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of experience. Uh, with and your major is in film, correct? Mm -hmm. you no, know, it's yeah. in it's in film. So you have uh, how many plays have you written and produced thus far? It's probably around six. Mm -hmm. And so, and then you have you you have your web series, and you've yeah. also worked with other other companies and people. Uh, just recently coming back, what from New York? Uh, uh, working on a project. What is, what's the name of that project yes. you worked on? That was Boys and Girls. That was a creative production. <laughs> oh, a creative. I yes. love like that. Keeping that in mind, you've done all this. And you brought it up. So let's talk about that. What is it? What do you, what do you see us now with theater? Since people, we've had, had to incorporate film with theater in order to get it done, uh, to keep it going. Where do you see us in the future? Do you see this could be in continuals? Where do you see it? Um, right now I see theater just, it's, it's, on a, it's on a delay. It really is because I understand some people can do, you know, small productions, they can do socially distanced productions, but like even, I know a lot of, of companies are taking their cue from Broadway, which, that's not even opening until 2021. And I know so many artists there are either jumping into film or they're just letting their career be on hold until theater really opens up. Because you know, right now there are two sides to theater, to the theater people. There is the theater is not theater if we're not on the stage and we don't have a full audience. And then you have the Theater is always, no matter what, involved and continued. And if this is where we are right now, this is what we're going to do right now. So it's, you have those two yeah. sides. And they're very strong on it. Like you said, you know, Broadway is, nope, we're shut down. But who can blame them? I mean, if yeah. all you can have in, in that big theater that holds thousands of people is 15%, just turning on the lights would not be paid. True, very true. Just turning on the lights and, and using the technical, you would not be able to pay uh, that. So their reasoning, I see it quite clearly, it's on a production money basis. Guess what do you think is the theater's role right now? 
in regards to what's going on in our country, uh, in regards to system, uh, systematic racism, uh, and just the whole stuff that's going on. Uh, knowing the history of theater, which started off as being a voice uh, for the unheard, uh, and a voice for the uh, justice system and against uh, political uh, corruption. Uh, that's, that's what it was, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that, that voice was used to do that because it was acceptable to go against the establishment. Uh, yeah. If you did it in the theater, funny kind of way, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> you, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Kill the king. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. You, you, you know. <laughs> so uh, what do you think are, are, um, is our responsibility in that? And do you see us doing it? So I think we definitely have a big role because in my eyes, art imitates life. It, it's our job to tell the stories of what is happening around us and also to, to make people aware, you know? Because for me, I personally write to spark conversation, to, to provoke thought. And, and it could be about anything. It could be about political stuff. It could be about family stuff. It could be, yeah, anything that's going on. I think it's our job to, to bring this awareness and, and, and what's going on politically and, and systematically to audience members, because sometimes them coming to see a show may be the only thing that they see that can open their eyes. And even um, I know on Broadway, they did the, the play American Son, and then they moved it to Netflix. And I was reading so many comments about people who didn't understand the racism that, that happens, although it could be subtle, but microaggression is a huge thing and and sometimes people can only understand these things through the arts sometimes we're the only voice that that speaks on behalf of minorities on behalf of you know the oppressed so i think it, it's a pretty big job and i think we're in the process of of raising our voices i think it's we're still in a transition phase but i think it's happening i think it's happening on a bigger scale mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it is. I think one of the, um, yeah, I, I, I just think that, that we need to do that. Uh, I, because even if we, uh, and not saying that everything should be written, you know, for that. Yep. Yes, we need, I definitely need comedy relief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, when, when my, for my, when, for this brain, the way it goes, for me to calm down, to relax, and to, and to cut out all that other stuff that causes me turmoil and stress and whatnot, I have to look at something really stupid and senseless. <laughs> I, I completely, I'm you right there I'm with you. You got to give I, your brain a chance yeah. to just. Relax. I have a couple of movies, you know, my go-to movies that are the most silliest, stupid, <laughs> mean nothing, just absolutely crazy fun. Yeah. You know, and stupid, and I, and I, you know, and I have a couple of sitcoms, you know, that I liked it. Okay, I need to look at this mm -hmm. because you know we can't take anything, and that's why even as writers, and would you agree with this that even if you write something that's 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 really tragic or or that that's really hard to deal with, if you don't put some humor in there somewhere, people can't take it. You you know, you as a writer, your job too is to make sure that. We give it to you in doses, I think. Uh, you you know, so you don't come out of there completely broken, yeah. Or, or you know, or completely traumatized. I, I I went to a play once that dealt with domestic uh, violence and abuse, and I'm telling you, uh, because of the stuff in my past that I've seen and heard and and done, uh, or and, and as a counselor, uh, you know, a counsel women that have done things, I was traumatized. I, I was, you know, like, oh, you know, when it was over, I was just so yeah, uptight and stressed out about it. And um, that I felt, at least for me, it didn't do what I think they would, if they wanted, for, for people that already know how bad it is, 
sometimes we just need to let people use their imagination sometime. And even if we give it to them, we can give it to them. We have to ease it in there a little bit. Give them a break. You know, not a whole hour and a half of straight, to even in horror movies, huh? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, the There's only something one. stupid in it. You, you know, <laughs> you're sitting there like, huh? <laughs> yeah, or the girl who always trips. <laughs> yeah, you know something, you know, and then something happens and make you go, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you, oh, you know, you know. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so uh, would you agree with that? <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's why we are entertainers. We, we give people a break or we send a message. We do yeah. both. We do it all. We do it all. Yeah. So one of the things uh, I'd like for you to, to do is give a word. What If you had a chance to talk to somebody right now, that is a young person or even a person that's older and has all these characters and stuff and, and just was sitting back thinking, I'm just crazy as heck. So how do you know, I'm just going to keep this or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> what kind of suggestions would you give to them that would help them be able to get that out, uh, to, to, to take all that imagination and do something with it? I would first suggest writing it out get it out of your head because otherwise it's going to keep circling it's going to keep recycling um because when i was a kid and i had those personalities my mom decided to buy me notebooks and i would write you know at seven years old like 30 page stories and and so yes definitely write get it out of your brain put these characters on paper and then once they're on paper they can come to life so easily you can share it with somebody you can take courses you can talk to somebody about it and learn and, and how to develop and grow but first off just write it down get it out of your head you know you're right about that because if you don't get it out of your head it's just gonna stay there mm -hmm. and and it keeps coming and that's when i always realized too for me when i got a story developing yep. because you know, characters will be in there. <laughs> and, and I'll be like, why are you talking? You know, why are you here? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, why is this? I keep thinking about a person or, a, a, you know what I mean? And and, yeah. and and seeing or hearing a personality. Um, and, you know, because now we're, we're actors. So, talk, you know, as an actress, mm -hmm. as an actor, uh, have you ever found yourself like, and this is how the characters develop. All of a sudden, I'm talking like the character or doing something. And then I might, I'll be like, oh, yeah. And even if I don't, that's not what's written. It's given me, the character is just coming to life. This is who this person mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Does that make sense? It's, 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 yeah, it's weird. But I've learned to accept it. You know, like I said, because once I realized that I was not crazy, you know, that I did not have <laughs> mental illness. You, you know what I'm saying? Seriously. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, that no, I'm, yeah, I'm talking, but I'm doing it. I understand now. Oh, those are characters that have come to life. And as you say, write it down. Yeah. Uh-oh. A story's developing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, a story's developing. So what's your future plans right now, Jazz? Well, at the moment, I am just diving into film. Uh, I've done uh, an acting piece. I'm going to do another one. Uh, during this, this phase, this kind of weird period that we're in, there's still a pandemic, but, you know, the economy is open. I am literally putting myself out there as much as possible, and I am auditioning. I'm still writing. I'm still producing my own stuff. I'm literally taking this, this moment to just push out as much content as I can to brand myself, to make myself ready. So when, so when, you know, my time comes or that opportunity happens, you know, to, to get into another level, to step into the big leagues, I'm like, okay, I got this, this mat to show you because I worked hard. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, that's yeah, working hard, doing. working hard is very important. <laughs> uh, work, yeah. and, and like you said, your brand, let's talk about your brand. Let's talk about your company. <laughs> Who is, 
Who are you, Jasmine Green? What is your company and your brand? <laughs> so my company is D&G Incorporated Productions. And people are always like, oh, what's D&G? So D&G is my family's middle initials. Um, they're all smashed together in that, that title, which is a company my dad started. And I was like, well, since he started it and it's family names, I want to carry it on. So he said, okay, you can have it. I said, cool. I'm going to add the productions onto the end because that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And so that's what started D&G Incorporated Productions. And literally it, the stories that have been swirling in my head, the characters that have been following me for a long time, they got an opportunity to come to life through D&G. And it's been an amazing journey that I don't plan to stop. And, you know, we still, I'm, pushing out two more projects this month All right. so. <laughs> yeah. well you know I'm, so, I'm i'm very proud of you and 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 everything that you're doing and 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 i know that you're going to do um i you know if it wasn't for this pandemic i'd be helping you but like you said even though it's I a know. pandemic i'm still you know with those of us that must and this is what i tell people those of us that must create yes it's it's one of those those things like you said i'm using even though this time it's a pandemic and all this is going on i'm very i'm still very busy you, mm -hmm. you know i'm still very busy doing stuff because i must you, you know and 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 i feel that those of us that must <laughs> create we must have an outlet i must be doing something uh, yes. productive and so I, I find myself even if I'm sleeping it's a for a reason it's so I can rest my brain so I can be productive <laughs> you know you know what I'm saying yeah. because I must yes it's uh, a lifeline <laughs> it's I felt like at the point where where everything was shut down I mean it was nice to rest but I'm like no, I, I can't. This, this gift inside of me is restless and it needs to be used. Otherwise, I don't feel like myself. And I'm sure for a lot of other people too, especially artists that are uh, honest, uh, we need to do this kind of thing uh, because if we don't, we may find, you know, we find ourselves being depressed and, um, and even more isolated than this situation would even cause uh, for us to be. So uh, that for me is another reason why I have to keep on keeping on no matter what. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I think. So, and how would people get in touch with you <laughs> uh, if they needed you to do anything? Acting, producing, Video graphic, she does it all. <laughs> uh, first off, you know, you can definitely find me on Facebook. It's Jasmine Green, J A S M Y N, and then green just like the color. Um, Facebook page, or you can email me at jasminegreen7 at gmail. Um, and that's for the actor for production, producing, writing, directing. It is D N G I N C, the word production at Gmail. And also the, the Facebook page is D N G I N C dot productions. So find me Jasmine Green or at D N G Incorporated Productions. All right. Well, I want to thank you for taking some time to Let's Talk Theater. I'm sure this won't be our last time uh, talking theater. Oh, yeah. uh, and I can't <laughs> wait till the, till the time, you know, when I'll be talking about your Oscar and your, yeah. Emmy, <laughs> and your Grammys <laughs> and all those good things that are going to come your way, Jasmine Green. So thank you so much for being with me today on Julie Whitney Scott Presents.